uh, my name is Peter Martin. Uh, this is my website, oh, uh, DB8. Um, PeterMartin.nl is my uh, personal website, and I will publish the sheets of this presentation afterwards. Uh, all the links in the presentation are blue, and you can click on it, so you can follow the things that I link to. So this presentation is about no more lorem ipsum. I will tell about what lorem ipsum is, how to use it, um, why it is bad, and also some alternatives. And I will end with a demo. So, um, what is lorem ipsum? Well, if you look at this, maybe uh, uh, people recognize it. Lorem ipsum doloris sit emet. And I don't read everything else. I mean, just the first part. Sorry. I forgot something. So, um, it looks like Latin, doesn't it? Sounds like Latin. It is Latin. It's derived from uh, um, a poem, I think, from Cicero, and it's called the. Fin no, it's not a poem. It's a. It's a, um, a, a book called the Finibus Borum e Malorum. Do you know what it means? Well, bonorum means something good, and malorum means something bad. So, probably the book of good and bad, or bad and good. Actually, there's a section in it, um, and it, there it says. Uh, ne neki poro, no, I don't even try it. But uh, actually, you can see it's dolorum instead of lorum. And um, yeah, this is uh, a real piece. And what happened is, um, oh, no, first, what, it, what does it mean? Well, if you translated it using Google Translate, you can see that it's uh, about pain and about um, uh, sorrow, etc. So, um, Dolorum ipsum means pain itself. So all the people using it are talking about pain itself, sorrow, grief, etc. Which is yeah, a bit sad. But you see it everywhere on all the sample texts. So uh, you can uh, go to wordsense.eu and uh, find more info about this. So um, why came it into use? Well, there are a couple of theories. Um, somebody here in the audience said that it's uh, a placeholder text uh, by printers in the past, and it was. Uh, back in the 15th century, um, you had those letter setters. So they had all the letters, they put it somewhere, and then they make a print of it to look how it looks like. But to make some tests, to, to show which kind of fonts you all have, um, you needed some text. And it was not done to take the Bible because it's re the people are really religious and you could not take Bible text for commercial purposes. So therefore they uh, ended up with um, lorem ipsum. Another theory is uh, in 1914 there was a book, I mean it was republished, and on page 34 they had too little room, so they put the word do on it with a dash. On the next page it said lorem ipsum, so do lorem ipsum was, was cut off. And in the 1960s, there was a letter set at the dry letters, dry transfer paper. So you have plastic with a letter on it. You put it somewhere, and with a, a coin or something, you can press it on something else. They also had it. And of course, in the 1990s, all the desktop publishing software included it. And therefore, now we see it everywhere. So um, it's used as a placeholder text, which can be useful. Um, it's used in the print and the, and the graphic industry and also in the web services industry, like we, we use it. And it's to, to make mockups, to visual mockups, to see how things look like. And it's actually very useful because uh, if you use real text, then uh, the customer might complain that there is an error in the text and that they want to change it. So in that case, it's, it's, it's good to use. And why are, using, why are people using it as a placeholder? Well. Designers always say, okay, I would like to design something, but I need text. Because without text, I cannot design, I have nothing to design. So, that's the first problem. And the second problem is, website builders, uh, they can only create text when the layout is ready, otherwise they don't know how it looks like. So, uh, they cannot create content when the layout is not finished. So, it's a catch-22. So, you can use placeholder text. And what are the benefits? Well, you can see the preview without uh, final text. 
you can see the typography and also have a feeling about how the design looks like. Uh, you take the focus and you keep the focus only on uh, on the layout and not on the text. And uh, yeah, how to use it? Uh, who uses lorem ipsum here? Everybody? Oh no, two not. Okay. So you have lipsum.com, probably the most uh, used because when you look for lorem ipsum, it's one of the on the top, and you can generate text. Um, just like this. So it says something about lorem ipsum, and here you can say how many paragraphs you you have, and then generate. And now it just generated this, and it always starts with lorem ipsum. Uh, you have Office Ipsum, and it uses not Lorem Ipsum, but more like Office language. And there are also some collections, and they have really like nice things like the Samuel L. Jackson Lip Ipsum. It uses text from Samuel L. Jackson, which is famous for uh, his role in Pulp Fiction. So you see that these kind of parts, uh, Tutor Ipsum, etc. If you use, um, you if you want to have it in your browser, there are browser plugins like Lorem Ipsum Generator. Or another one, yet another one. Or Firefox also has it. And there are also website plugins. Uh, for Joomla, you have uh, the Q QL Lorem Ipsum or Content Fake. WordPress also has some generators. And you can also use software libraries. If you're a programmer and you program in PHP, you can use something called Faker. Well, this is really interesting because if you go to the Faker page, you see this repository has been archived by the owner in 2020, so it's no longer supported. I read into it why he stopped doing it, and he said, okay, he wrote somewhere, um, his fake text generator has all kinds of languages, and because when you uh, uh, download this, you get all those languages. Maybe you are doing it only in German, but you will get the Dutch, the English, Spanish, etc. And you, yeah, it's, you get too much data. And he, uh, his reason, he reasoned like, okay, um, the carbon footprint of his repository is too big. And therefore he start, stopped doing it. He said, if I would have known that it would be so popular and so many languages, he would have set it up in another way. So you don't have to download all the languages. Actually, I don't really agree with this. I mean, I respect his view, but I think that um, if we don't download it and we have to develop it ourselves, we are doing more work, cost more uh, uh, carbon footprint, I think. So anyway, um, it's, this is no, lo no longer used. But the other one, the faker, uh, it is still there and you can specify names, I mean, uh, how do you say, uh, languages, etc. And this is what I use, and I will show you later on how I used it. If you're a Python programmer, there's also something for Python. So, why is lorem ipsum bad? Do you have any idea why it's bad? Exactly, that's... Uh, uh, sometimes we forget it exactly. Well, that's one of the reasons. I have four different reasons. Uh, the first time, um, it uses optimal uh, content to do the layout. So on the left, you see it really, really looks nice, lorem ipsum, and everything looks really great. On the right, there is real text in it. In this case, it's English text. Uh, it doesn't fit because they didn't take into account that you have to do it on two lines. And actually, in um, English words can be shorter. In in Germany, the the letters are longer. I know that because of the translations in the the Joomla backend for uh, Germany. I mean for uh, German. So uh, if you would use this for German text, it would even not fit either. So uh, yeah, it's not real content. So it's not suitable for that. The other thing is, it doesn't make any sense to use lorem ipsum. On the left, you see categories, like, uh, well, you cannot read it, but it says something like foods, I think, recipes, etc. 
On the right, everything is called lorem or lorem ipsum. So when you click on it, you don't know what happens. You just go to another lorem ipsum page. So you, you don't have any feeling, uh, any grasp about the navigation. The third thing, it takes so much extra work. Um, you have to create all those ipsum texts, put it in, and afterwards you have to get it out. Otherwise, uh, you end up with lorem ipsum uh, in your live website. Um, you probably know that uh, a lot of template clubs, when they release a template, they also have a quick install. Some people use the quick install and then change everything to their liking. And then you end up with really a lot of stuff you don't really use. Um, it's the same with the Joomla sample content. If you uh, click on it, you get sample content of Joomla, but maybe you're not really uh, want this afterwards. And then the removing is really a lot of work. And then the the the, uh, the other part is uh, the mistakes. So uh, here, this is a label of. of something for, called Peter Rabbit. I, I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe it's a toy. And uh, it says lorem ipsum dollar in the text. I don't know if you can see it, but they forgot to change it over there. Or maybe you like wine. Well, this is a French label. And the uh, italics on the left, it's uh, lorem ipsum. Or maybe you have some uh, breakfast st stuff, some ant drink. Maybe food and drink it's called, but it says lorem ipsum. And also the family special and then lorem ipsum again. So uh, what alternatives can you use for lorem ipsum? Well, first of all, use real text. Just ask the, 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 the owners of the website that they have the real text available for you uh, before you start with the project. And say, yeah, we cannot start. And uh, when you don't deliver it, when you when you can't deliver the text within maybe a month, uh, maybe you have to wait for two months before I can start because I start other projects right now. So you have to maybe put some pressure on it. The other thing is you can use sample AI text. Like um, yesterday, I did a presentation about ChatGPT for website developers. I did a demonstration with uh, for AI. It's uh, made by um, a French uh, developer. Uh, I will show you in a minute. Uh, this extension also here. You can also use public domain stuff like old English books like Alice in uh, Wonderland or other language texts that are no, that does not where no copyright is used anymore. And of course for Joomla there is a plugin called DB8 Ipsum. It's a, a, a plugin I created recently to use to the Joomla console to do stuff and I will show you the Joomla console also to, to do this. So first, uh, the ChatGPT. Um, who was in my session of yesterday about ChatGPT? Oh, half of it. Okay, nice. So um, I have this really nice website. I have one article in it. What is Lorem Ipsum? So if I go to the back end of the website, I go to System because I, I just installed it. We, we assume that I just installed it. It's a, a plugin. It's called 4AI. There are two plugins, and the system plugin, when I switch it on, uh, it will work. So here you see I have this button. So after I installed it, I had to add an API key that I obtained from OpenAI. The, um, the, the plugin itself is not free, it's a paid plugin. But the use of it is also not free. You have to pay for uh, the use of ChatGPT, but it's really little. I have not I have not been charged yet. So uh, open AI. Uh, was it a platform? Oh yeah, there it is. So I have um, API stuff. Under a few APIs, oh, I can show it because you cannot read it anyway. So you can create um, um, a name, you get a secret key, you copy the key, and uh, in the backend of the component, so it's, no, sorry, it's a um, component for AI. There you have all these kind of options. I already uh, configured this, but here with the configuration, I added the key. You cannot read it here, but 
that was my key. And um, now I can use it. So what I do, I go to the content, articles. I wrote an article about Lorem Ipsum. And this extension, the 4AI, if I click it, it will take the text that is in the article text. So click, and now I have, uh, it says, uh, what is Lorem Ipsum? I can say, I want to transform it. I want to expand it. So instead of the just one line, I want to have a text about it. And if I do submit request, it will cost me 00045 cents. I hope it works. Sometimes it's really, um, how do you say? You have a stow uh, for uh, OpenAI. A traffic jam, that is. <laughs> and uh, yesterday I did a presentation about it. I also uh, did a demo. And I go back to OpenAI. You can see your usage. And yesterday uh, I had to pay really a small amount. And also today, this morning, a small amount. Um, so I only used $2 cent so far. And they, they, they don't charge me for that. Um, what if you have a website that is really popular and uh, you use the API, not like for generating, but for responding to people, then you really use it a lot. If you, if you write something and it, it responds, it uses the API to respond. Um, yeah, it might be very expensive, so therefore you can uh, top it. So my limit is 120 euro uh, dollars per month. And if you go over it, it just do anything it doesn't work anymore so it, it protects you for uh, too high bills I go back now because I hope that uh, it's finished yet yes it did so the mystery behind Lorem Ipsum it was just generated when we were talking here and now I can say um, replace the editor text content hop okay now I can close this one and if I say oh yeah on the front end it says Lorem Ipsum what is Lorem Ipsum when I uh, save it it says, the mystery behind Lorem Ipsum, a whole text about it. And I think that if I open the um, publishing, it also created a meta description. The meta description uh, is not used for uh, getting higher ratings. It's only used for displaying some text uh, when you are in the search results. But Google is really like, sometimes they take something off of your page, but it's, it's good to do this. So this is um, yeah, for AI. You can buy it, I think it's Weebler. Maybe you know um, uh, Yannick uh, Gold J uh, because of his extension SA404 Seth. I think he doesn't uh, use it anymore, or he doesn't support it anymore or develop it anymore because now he has a uh, for CEO. And uh, M4 AI is uh, what I use. So yeah, it's uh, weebler.com and here you can buy the extension. So the other thing, I will switch off uh, open a, I mean, um, this extension now. Go to, no, go to the system, the logins, and it just disable it. So I told you about um, a plugin I wrote myself and I will show it here now. It's called Console DB8 Lipsum. Um, I switch it off first to see how it works. So um, I go to here. Okay. Um, hold on. Docker. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Exec. Mm, Apache. No. Yes. So. Let's assume uh, you have a server. Uh, your website is on, on a server somewhere and uh, you have access using SSH. Do you all know what SSH means? It's, um, no, okay. Um, on Linux, on Linux you have the command line and with SSH you can log in on another server and you can use the command line over there. So what you can see here now, it says user local Apache 2 htdocs. 
I can do a listing and you probably uh, recognize your Joomla structure with Joomla files and folders. So Joomla has a, a CLI. With Joomla tree, uh, you might use Akiba backup. Then you will have a couple of files here in this folder. Uh, with Joomla 4, you don't. It's only one file called Joomla.php. And you can have a, a, a console plugin that, that is in a folder. Hold on. Called um, plugins and then console and then you have um, in this case the DB8 Ipsum that I created myself and this is the the plugin that I created so I go back to the to the command line and I'm really glad that I tricked you with this presentation so I can show you some command lines otherwise you probably not have attended my meeting so. In Joomla, when you have access to the command line, only uh, if you have server access you can do this. It's PHP, Joomla.php. You see all these commands. Uh, you can change configuration on the command line. You can uh, do updates on the command line. You can uh, export your database on the command line. You can discover or install extensions on the command line. Uh, you can do scheduler, finder, you can do uh, you can switch a site off on on or on on the command line. Um, users, you can add users. So if you have a really big list of users, you can just add them here instead of in the in the in the graphical interface of Joomla. So this is just default Joomla. Every Joomla website, Joomla 4 has this. So what I do now, I go back to the back end of my Joomla website. I open this console plugin. I say enabled. And now I have a couple of choices because I only trigger it on the command line. And here I can just configure everything. So I say the parent category should be DB8 Ipsum. Um, this is used for when I want to remove everything afterwards. I can create the number of categories, maybe four. I tried it with uh, uh, 80 and with 800 articles in each category it works but uh, just for my purpose here uh, just i want to have some content so i can uh, use uteam pro to to make a couple of layouts with the content i just created so it is just as this is uh, like a uh, modest a modest amount of articles and categories four categories in each category i, sh I would like to have eight articles or you know what nine um, should it create uh, menu items for the for the categories? Yes. And what about for the articles? In this case, yes. If you have a lot of articles, you might have duplicates and then you have errors. I have to, have to find something to solve that. Should it create images? Yes, I would like to have images for each category and also for each um, uh, article. And the images will be saved in images and in a folder called debate Ipsum. Then I can see them. So if I go to, um, uh, yeah, sorry, I go back, I go back to the file structure. So you can see here I have a folder called images. It has a sample stuff like the banners, the headers, the sample data. This is just Joomla. So now I go back. So this is, this, these are my settings. It's enabled. I do save and close. So um, if I go back the command line and I do exactly the same command PHP Joomla PHP and I go up a bit hey there's something new it's called DB8 Ipsum content create and also DB8 Ipsum content remove so what I can do now I just go to the command line DB8 Ipsum content create creating content. Now I go back, I go to content, categories, you see I have new stuff. I do uh, rebuild because it needs a structure and now you can see I have a category called db8 ipsum with a couple of subcategories in it and every art, every one has nine articles. So um, 
if I open just one of those articles, you can see that it has um, a title and an alias. You can see it has uh, some text, Alice taught poor Alice. You know what it is? Alice in Wonderland. Yes. Uh, it's, there's no copyright op on it, and uh, uh, the Faker library that I use in this uh, plugin has this on board for English text. Um, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to show you the picture. So I really did my best to create a fancy picture, which looks like this. So if I go to, oh yeah, and if I open this picture, you can see cross-platform maximized portal, because the name of the article is cross-platform maximum portal. So therefore you can really recognize the images that it is part of some article. If I go to the front end, I don't think that I will see it on the front end, because I don't have a menu for it. But if I go to the back end again, and I go to uh, system system styles, and I just enable uh, a Uteam Pro, I go to the front end again, you can see here the categories. So. Um, these are the articles with the layout of uh, Uteam Pro, and I can just start to lay out everything. And uh, when I open one, you can see the article with some text. This is yeah what I just created. So after you're finished doing all the designing and you get the real text, or your customer uh, will add the text, you just go back to the command line, and instead of uh, PHP joomla.php db8 ipsum uh, um, semicolon of co column uh, content colon create and then instead of create you do remove oh hold on um, I also go to this image folder so I showed you the image folder here we have the ipsum and it's totally full with all kinds of images so for every for every article and category, it created an image for that. And if I do remove, oh, now it's gone again. And if I go to my back end of the website, I go to content, categories. I just have one category again, so everything is gone again. Um, I, I'm sorry? Yes, it removed everything from the database and also the files. Um, I still have to create a package of it, but if you uh, if you want to use it and you don't want to wait, um, no. Uh, this is the the URL. It's also in the presentation. And you can you can download this, but I, I I will make a package that you can install if you like. So uh, then you can use it yourself. So are there any questions? Oh yeah. Um yeah, interesting question. So um I will go to uh, the a plugin, it's a console plugin called D, uh, DB8 Ipsum, and I have some source. So this is the, the Joomla uh, 5 structure, and here I have create command, the create command. Um, so um, this create command, oh yeah, typical. These are all the are all the files. Here I do generate image. So uh, for the generate image, I used uh, I think it was a, a G, some some commands that are in the PHP library of the GD package that that you have on the server. Most of the, the websites have it of, or Image Magic. Um, but this is uh, yeah what I did. So I use some random numbers 
I also created a different um, a different image for categories than for articles. For articles, it was like uh, images with all those uh, uh, spikes everywhere, and the categories are more like uh, yeah, just one one sort of pattern. Uh, but it's all random, and I, I use something called um, oh yeah, I also did something with the contrast. Because if you have uh, a light light uh, image, the, the text should be black, otherwise you cannot see it. So I took care of those things. So what I did was I used some formulas to look at the hex color that I was using somewhere, and I just changed it with an offset. So um, here I create the, the image color stuff. If it's an article, uh, it will do it randomly. The, the I randomized it in another way, and I used image filled rectangle and fill it filled polygon to, uh, yeah, to create it. And here I, I do the image JPEG, and when it's saved, I destroy the the image that I had in in the, in the memory. So um, that is how I created the images. Um, Faker is also nice. So uh, what I did was I um, I used uh, this is a bit technical, but uh, maybe it's interesting. Um, do you know Composer? Yes? Okay. Uh, if you look at the Joomla website, uh, you can see that it has a library folder somewhere. I have to check. Uh, hold on. Here are the libraries. In the library, you have Fender. And all these things you can see here, like a Jacob Smith, I don't know what it is, a Google, Doctrine. Doctrine is something with a database. Uh, Google is something, oh yeah, with the recaptcha stuff. Jake Smith, I have no idea what it is. But these are names of, uh, not project, but authors. Like, I, I would be a PE7ER here, if, it, if Joomla would use something of me. And in it, you can see uh, the name of, um, of some library. So these are all, um, pieces of code that Joomla takes out of the open source and use it in, in Joomla. When Joomla uh, is made available for us to download, um, some people from uh, some coders that are responsible for the code, they do a command like um, a composer update or composer install, and then all these libraries will be upgraded to the latest version. So it's a sort of package version for all those external uh, uh, dependencies. You should not do the, com docker co of the, the compose stuff on the command line because then your Joomla website doesn't ha is the same what is distributed. And if you have errors, you don't know why the errors are there. Um, if you use Docker, uh, I mean, compose yourself in your project, you should not put it in the Joomla folders. What, you, what I did, I have to go back to my uh, plugin. Uh, it's the console plugin, db8 ipsum. So you can see I have my own Fender folder. And in this Fender folder I have Composer, which I needed to do Compose. It's faker.php. And faker.php, this is a library that has a dependency for Symfony. A project on Symfony which is called Deprecation Contract. So what I did, this is the... I say just require faker.php, which is the author, uh, the library faker, and I want to have anything, I think it was uh, until 1.22. So if they have version 2, uh, it won't be updated, because it, then otherwise you can have backwards co uh, compatibility. So um, then you have also the composer lock, and uh, this is generated because the um, um, a faker library needs all this kind of stuff. So it has a package for faker, it has a package for uh, zip, uh, no, or no, no. Uh, P PS uh, container. I don't do. I'm not really sure what it is, what everything is. But it needed. It needs to to use this to run. And what I do, I just in my uh, plugin, I use auto load. I uh, load uh, all all this stuff, and I can just use it as a class. And <coughs> to be honest, um, in the past when I was programming stuff, I uh, didn't know how to do PDFs. So there were a really nice websites where you could download PDF libraries, and then uh, you just used it. And I was using stuff for five years. I never updated it because yeah, you, did, you didn't know if there were any updates. 
But then I found about Composer and Packagist, and there you can find libraries, and those libraries you can keep up to date much better, and that's how Joomla uh, does it also with, uh, with those. It's a bit technical, and uh, uh, that's it. Hello, Mark. <laughs> um, are there any other questions? Yes? I have no idea. I, I, I know that he has two different licenses, one for uh, just one package and one for uh, multiple websites. Uh, but it's, it's open source software, uh, so if you install it on one website, you can probably not, uh, you can install it on another website, but you cannot update it automatically using the Joomla updater over there. Well, I mean, you, you can you can uh, buy software and install it on this computer, that computer, that computer, but because the token is accepted only on one site, I think, uh, you can only keep one up to date, and the other ones you have to download it again and install it again, probably, if you want to use it in multiple computers. Yes, yes, and the update process. Yes. I mean, um, I, I have a, a commercial component of a commercial extension myself. It's called D2 Profiles. Uh, after this session, we will do a small demo in uh, uh, in the other room. And uh, yeah, we decided uh, that it's, it's from Secret in, Secret Gambling and me. And we decided we yeah we don't limit people. You just buy it and you can install it everywhere. Only when uh, the subscription runs out, uh, you have to buy a new subscription. Otherwise, you cannot update it on all your sites. And we use tokens, just like Akiba Backup. Uh, you can create tokens and also with a uh, Pro you can create tokens for the website so if you have a customer that uses uh, software where you bought a license for and the customer decides to go away they don't like you anymore they want another provider they don't they cannot use your uh, uh, software anymore because you just disable it then so uh, that's what we also did with uh, our extension I'm not really sure how uh, Yannick did it with uh, uh, with his extension, but you, maybe uh, you can just ask this question there at, at, uh, to him. I mean, he uh, usually... It was a bit reorganizing the different licenses. Uh, I think that when you buy the, the normal pro version, that it's valid for three websites, mm. and is not enforcing it technically, but if you use it on more than three websites, then you're supposed to take the Super Pro version. But it's a gentleman's agreement. Yes, it's yes, it, it's yes, not sorry. blocking, it's just counting on people to be honest. And uh, so so he's fair, and it's fair enough also to, to pay more if you use more, so. Yeah. I think if you use it for your customers, um, yeah, you can charge them a bit for it. The only thing is... Uh, if you pay less, I, 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 uh, wanted to simplify the, the process. Uh, the process, yeah. yes. That's well, there's one thing that makes it, makes it a bit difficult, probably, and that's because um, for if you install on multiple websites for multiple clients, every of those clients has to create their own uh, account at OpenAI or using ChatGPT using the API. Otherwise, you end up paying uh, for everything they do if, if, they, use them, if they use your license. At, um, I mean, not your license, your API key at OpenAI. Do you mean what? I, do you know what I mean? So, I just did. Uh, this is. Uh, it was 002, and it ends up 45. If I refresh it now, you can see it's more now. It's now uh, 003 cents. So just one article. But uh, yeah, you can do a lot with this open A. Of, I mean, this for AI uh, stuff. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, sorry. Oh, I thought you had a question. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for your attention.